Welcome to Lily Labs HQ, also known as our living room. The basis for this talk is my work with POW, our menstrual cycle journal app. In this video, I'll talk to you about why it's so important for me that POW is encrypted. We'll have a look at the tech stack and then we'll finish a project I started by adding user-based functionality. My name is Benedicta. I'm the co-founder, senior developer, and mom of Lily Labs. And with me, I have Ula, co-founder, junior developer, and dad, and also our little intern, Lillian. For as long as I've been a developer, I wanted to make my own menstrual cycle app. I found that existing ones very rigid in their structure and also very detailed. However, I didn't think seriously about it until the Wall Street Journal could reveal that most of these apps, at least health apps and some period trackers, were sharing the data with third parties. This was in the beginning of last year and later in the same year, a journalist could tell us that she had received smiling family baby mother ads and she didn't understand why because she wasn't pregnant she didn't have a kid and then she realized oh i forgot to track my period in the app and then she went into the app and logged her period and lo and behold the ad stopped another thing that happened was that the app that i was using which is really one of the good ones they share data with scientists sent me an email telling me that you know only certain people with privileged access could read my data or have a look at my data and that's when it hit me even though i am a developer who's always known this that there's always someone with access to the data and if i was going to make an app like this i didn't really want to have the possibility to have a look at my user's data because probably the first users I would have would be my friends. It's kind of awkward if you're just doing some maintenance and you see some of this data, and then on the next party you attend, you'd be like, oh, you're on your period, or you guys had sex yesterday. So I asked myself the question, how could I make an app where even I couldn't have a sneak peek at my user's data. So I started looking into encryption. I even got a proof of concept going using the crypto API that ships with modern browsers. But as the front end full stack developer I am, I really like to offload this kind of work to backend as a services. And in the end, I found UserBase. So what is UserBase? UserBase is a backend as a service in the way that you might be familiar with from Firebase. It automatically syncs data between all the user's devices. The difference being that all the data is end-to-end -end encrypted. What does that mean? It means that before the data is sent off, it is locked down or encrypted using a key derived from the user's own password. By doing it this way, even if somebody got access to the encrypted data, somewhere in the cloud where Daniel, the creator of user base has saved it, they will not be able to read the data because they do not have the user's password that is needed to generate the key that is needed to decrypt the data. So in an app like this, there is no password recovery and we should encourage the users to use a very long password so nobody will be able to guess it. The other technology we're using is Gatsby. We're using it because it's something I'm familiar with. I really like it. We want the app to be a web app and we wanted to get more and more of those progressive web app capabilities and Gatsby seems like a great framework for doing that. We also chose Gatsby because Ola, our junior developer, taught himself to code using mostly Gatsby tutorials. So this is a framework he's also familiar with, but I guess I don't have to sell Gatsby to you as you're watching this video. Now let's jump into the code and finish that project I started for us. So let's have a look at what we're gonna make. I call it the ugliest journal. It's very much inspired by UserBay's own example app, Ugliest To Do, which is what they reference in their quick start documentation. I could have used POW's own code base, but there's so much going on there that I wanted to make something where we could focus on UserBase and Gatsby and not all of the design and all of the other things that go into our app. The app, of course, has its mandatory marketing page. There is also a login page, a sign up page. When you get into the app, there's a list of your entries. You can add a new entry or you could have a look at a single entry and maybe even delete it. I started this project by using Gatsby's own tutorial for making a site with user authentication. I even used the plugin they recommend for client-side only route, which is something we need in most app-like projects. I've cheated a little, so the sign-up page is working, delete is working, but we still have to make the login page, which you might've noticed, I didn't even write in a password, and we need to fetch all the users journal entries from user base. So let's start by making the login. First step, import user base. Then we have to update this dummy handle submit login to actually use both the username and password and send it off to user base for our authentication. Let's see how this works. Ooh, 
App ID not set yet, make sure to configure App ID. This is something I really like with Userbase. They're very good with their error messaging. Not all frameworks are as vigilant with error messaging as you might be familiar with. So let's do what they ask and configure our App ID. Let's try again. And now it says already signed in. And this is because I've been playing around with this and already signed in to you know test everything. And it's actually saved in our session so that users don't have to log in every time they go to the app. I think the user is stored for about 24 hours or so, but you can also uh, disable this if you want to. So to fix this, we will capture the session and check if there's a user already signed in. And if so, set our user to that user. And as you can see, I could log in without doing anything. So this functionality doesn't really fit in our login page. So let's move it up to the component that is wrapping all our client paths. And as always, import, import, import. Now, if we try to log in, we are just redirected into the app, but we're still seeing dummy data. So let's fix that. Whenever the user changes, we want to fetch the entries belonging to that user from user base. And as you can see here, this function takes a change handler, and this is how we're getting that automatically syncing of data. And voila, this is working. We can see Ruby's entries. Ruby is one of the characters from a story that Ula is developing that he hopes to use when teaching Lillian how to code. It's a time traveling historical novel where they have to code to get out of problems. The only thing left now is to let Ruby add new journal entries. Again, we must remember to import user base. And then we can use user base insert item. Another thing I really like about user base is that their API is very self-explanatory. Simply by looking through this documentation page, you will get a sense of what user base can do for you. And there we've added a new entry and it looks like Ruby is still in trouble. That's all we have time for in this video, but as you might have seen when we looked at the user base documentation, there is a lot more to user base. You can now share encrypted data between users, something that we are looking forward to with POW because we want to give our users the ability to share select data with, for instance, their partners. I also know that they will be coming out with encryption of files, aka images, opening up the possibilities of user base. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And I also am very interested in knowing what kind of encrypted app you want to make. If you would like to connect further, I am at Ray on Twitter. I have also just started a YouTube channel. So if you search for Ray of Lily Labs, you'll find me. And I really hope to see you there. That's all. Bye bye. That's all, folks. Go home. Try out there. Huh? You forget?